What's going on, guys? Welcome to another, uh, well, a new series of episode reviews. This is for Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. Um, of course, we reviewed the the Jujutsu Kaisen Zero movie. We didn't review Season 1, so uh, I guess we figured we'd do Season 2 since we did the movie. Um, but uh, with me, as always, I have Blue Spade. Yeah. Um, so it's it's gr- great to have this sh- show back after how, how many years ago? Or like about a couple of years ago? I think. Yeah, and I feel like we should give some background information with season two as well because uh as uh, uh some people might not know but apparently there was a I, I guess a director change from season one and uh into season two um i'm not sure if the same director did the movie though i'm guessing they did um but yeah apparently they got a new director for season two yeah um, and i feel like that's kind of immediately apparent with you know especially once we saw the trailers um and it kind of looked like a bit of a I guess you'd say a little bit of an art style change like not anything too drastic but you can tell it was it was that you know maybe a different director doing it yeah I think it was um what was it Sh- Shoto Gon Goshu I, I can't I think so yeah Sh- Sh- Shota is uh, uh re- replacing I think the previous director from from season one um Dude, so I am curious though like do we know why that's happening or are they just deciding to like or, you know, maybe the previous director just wanted to do another project and they wanted to get somebody new. I uh, I could assume that it has something to do with MAPPA having so many different projects all at once with, I mean, yeah. we, we have, we still have Attack on Titan, um, the, you know, the final part that's coming out by the end of this year. There's Hell's Paradise still playing. We still have Chainsaw Man Part 2 coming up, wh- like, whenever that's going to come around. Um, but, There's also yeah. a director change for that, too. Yeah, so, so I mean that that could be my assumption. It's like I I don't think that I don't know like the exact reason, but I think it's just maybe it's due to because there's so many different projects that Mappa is currently working on uh, as well. Yeah, it's as possible, Kaisen. yeah. So, um, but yeah, for season two, um, we're not picking up uh, the end of season one. We're actually going back in time, back when the. Um, uh, Satoru Gojo uh, was a student back at the Jujutsu. Uh, what was it? The Jujutsu Academy. Yeah, um, but I mean, of course, the episode doesn't initially really pick up with, on his perspective. We actually go to well. It starts out with uh, this this other person. I, I, who who exactly? What is there's this guy? You know, we see him walking down the street, um, and he's uh, exercising. I guess one of the uh, cursed spirits. Um, yeah, I, I I forgot the guy, but yeah, I think uh, the the episode uh, picks up with um, uh, a younger Utahime and Meimei, uh, who are yeah. of course um, t- teachers uh, uh, of Jujutsu Academy. So they're assigned to investigate this haunted house that many people have gone missing from, and they they uh, as soon as they investigate, they realize that they're trapped in in this like almost this like this endless repeating hall and um Uzi yeah. Heime, uh su- suggests an idea on how to get themselves out of it is just by running as fast as they as they can across this hall and supposedly it works it but then like uh w- w- one of the cursed spirits uh ends up attacking them but uh, well, i think it was actually wasn't it may that suggested that they run in opposite directions or something uh so that way they could get out I of, think, uh, of the whole yeah, way. I think that's the case. And yeah. um, uh, also, really quick too, like I, I do want to point out, like in in regards to the director, like the new director, um, it's it's really, uh, of course, like you can tell there's all already like kind of a difference in how he's approaching the series because mm-hmm. we've, uh, like it's like with the scene where they're investigating the the haunted house, like. There's so many different like camera angles he's utilizing. Like they go into like a first person perspective at some point, and then they're kind of uh, like they'll show characters from different camera angles. And and at one point it looked like they were. I think it was pretty obvious they were using some kind of rotoscoping uh, for like Udahime. Um, uh, so and, and of course like the scene where she's running out of the house. Uh, I didn't even know this, but somebody did like a side by side comparison. It was actually a reference to. Uh, Satoshi Kon's Paprika, uh, this one scene where this guy is running uh, down a hallway. Uh, apparently, the, the director, had, <laughs> I guess, took some inspiration from that uh, with uh, Udahime running down that hallway. Yeah, I, I didn't re- even realize it at first until somebody on Twitter posted that. 
Yeah. Uh, so it's it's interesting that they kind of make you know make almost like this, almost like the exact copy of this sort of um, hallway uh, running scene. So um, so yeah. So after after they managed to, well, you could say they kind of escaped, but it's like this cursed spirit ended up attacking them. But before but before it it can end up attacking uh, Ujihime and Meimei, um, it ends up being uh, killed. Uh, by both uh, Satoru Gojo and Suguru Geto, who was still a student at the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, and of course is where we get, you know, kind of well, introduced to both Satoru or Gojo and Geto and get an, I, you know, sort of feel for their relationship. Yeah. Because it was something that was kind of hinted at, of course, in uh, Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. Um, but of course, I guess with this arc, we're going to be seeing, like, the, you know the full extent of what their relationship was yeah and uh, they're, they're also uh, uh joined by the third teammate uh shoko who's of course uh, the the doctor of jujitsu academy who observes uh, all all the bodies uh you know at, at the time so um uh, it's but, funny yeah, because it's, she does look really similar to uh nobara uh with, yeah like, with, uh, how she looks in, in uh you know in, in this arc yeah, with 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 the you know short shoulder length hair and all, and you know yeah. the exact same, uh, you know basically almost like the exact copy of Novara at times, but it's not really her. So yeah. So uh, a- after this, uh, well, all of them get uh, re- reprimanded by um, the principal at Jujutsu High at the time for uh, not for ne- neglecting to open a curtain uh, during that whole incident. So they all get in trouble for that. Uh, whole situation yeah and then like i think um well yeah like shortly after that they also get assigned like a some kind of a well a task by the principal to protect this girl who is the uh vessel what they call her again like she was the vessel for um i think uh, they call it the plasma star vessel yeah and that it has to do with uh like uh, Tengen Sama or something like that. It was it was a little bit convoluted, honestly. Like I was like, wait, uh, and, you know, it, it's sort of like we get revealed this all all this information pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, and that apparently these two factions are after her. Uh, I forget what they were called. Like one was the uh, was the, it the Q faction or something? Uh, I yeah, I'm uh, pretty sure it's the the Q faction, and I think the other one is called the Time Vessel Association. Yeah, I. It, Speaking of the Q faction, I think this is the Q faction that we see in this episode. Um, the Q faction, like they look really similar to the Quincy's from Bleach, and I mean because they it, they have a really similar looking attire, um, and also that just the fact they're called the Q faction, uh, I, it makes me wonder if uh, the author was <laughs> maybe taking some inspiration from Bleach in in terms of their design. Yeah, I, um, like I kind of noticed that as well. It's just like. It's kind of weird that they, you know, that they more or less look similar to ways, not to mention the cute Q name, which is like, yeah. you know, almost short for Quincy of sorts. But I, I, you know, of course, that's not really what the, the creator was going for at the time. Um, but we also get to see like um, uh, a little bit more of a dynamic between between uh, Gojo and Geto. Basically, uh, like, uh, of course, having their disagreements about the relationship between sorcerers and uh, and uh, and regular humans, as we all know, uh, G- Ghetto has like um, you know has this mindset that the entire world should be you know full of sorcerers instead of uh, you know regular humans. Yeah, um, yeah. I, kinda, I guess we kind of get an idea of like their the difference of their philosophies or something. Yeah, which in- inevitably leads into their conversation confrontation uh, by the end of uh, Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, which is of course. I it's you know I'm still scratching my head about that you know that whole ending in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero of what happened between Gojo and Geto by the end of that movie, so it's mm-hmm. it's not it's not it's not really clear what happened after that. I mean, um, you know whoever watched the movie and of course uh, listened to our review, review at the time, uh, it just seemed like Geto was apparently killed by Gojo, but we we all know like Geto is still alive throughout the entirety of that you know of season one. So unless he somehow survived that and or something it's it's, it's kind of weird gojo let him go and maybe it looked like he might have killed him but he didn't so i mean I ghetto still has that 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 gi- that gigantic scar across his forehead so that yeah. could have been the reason but it's not really clear so 
I, I mean, at least we're, we're getting some kind of hint, hints to Gojo and Ghetto's disagreements of, I, I guess, how, how the relationship eventually fell apart uh, by the end, which I'm pretty sure it's going to be explained by the end of this arc. Yeah, probably. Yeah, so event eventually, like, uh, after um, Gojo and Ghetto, um, uh, I, I guess, deal with the members uh, of, of the Q faction, uh, I think the end of this episode, like, um, I think one of the members of the Time Vessel Association hires um, so- someone to kill to kill the this girl. I think who was the Plasma Star Vessel, and I think it was uh, the guy. Well, they well they try to they they try to go to the where the girl is located, and then like there's a bomb that goes off, and she gets thrown out of a window, um, and like Ghetto has to you know try to go save her. Um, and also, I want to point out this is a this is a pretty impressive looking sequence too with him jumping out the window mm-hmm. like that yeah that looked really good um but yeah it's just kind of uh, it sets up this fight between ghetto and this other maybe like this other q member and also there's another fight that i guess is about to happen between uh uh gojo and this uh, one of the other members uh who has like a bunch of knives he tries to you know i he, he i guess he threatens gojo with yeah it, well, I yeah, it was it was a good sequence, uh, but pretty pretty much that's where we leave off with them. But like I said earlier, mm-hmm. the end of this episode introduces us to to Toji Zenin, who's now going uh, sorry, who's now going by his uh, his wife's maiden name uh, Fushiguro. So it set yeah, that's, and of course, uh, you know we we know of, I think it was Megumi Fushiguro. Um, so I'm wondering what the relation is. You know, maybe it's like his, maybe he's like his brother or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hopefully we'll we'll get those answers. But that's pretty much where we leave the episode off. Um, yeah. It, yeah, it was a decent episode. Um, uh, of course, uh, like it's uh, unlike you know the time when we uh, where we left off back in season one, we're pretty much going back in time. Um, you know, back back uh, when G- Ghetto Gojo and uh, Shoko were you know, were all classmates. Uh, you know, during their time with uh, Jujutsu High. Um but I think this yeah. is more or less a continuation of where, uh, for people who have watched Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, um, considering that uh, Zero kind of like you know showed off several flashbacks of uh, Gojo and Ghetto being classmates with each other before eventually turning on each other uh, sometime mm. after that. So it's yeah. So apparently, this story arc is going to last five episodes of season two and then the next arc which is the Shibuya incident arc is going to be uh, 18 episodes so I guess like the remainder of season two yeah um, and I guess this is all really more set up for the Shibuya incident arc yeah I mean hopefully- uh, which of course is going to go back into uh, the present uh, but it's, it is kind of jarring because you know you go from season one and um, and uh, then you go into the movie which also is in in the, in the past and it, you know, focuses on this other character. Um, and then, of course, you go from that to um, season two, which is focusing on uh, Ghetto and uh, Gojo in the past. Um, so it, it is kind of weird. You know, of course, you know, it's it's like we're kind of forgetting about Yuji, the main character. But at the same time, I do kind of like that they're focusing on some of these side characters and fleshing them out. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it is just kind of, you know, kind of weird. You're like, you know, where's... Where's Yuji and the other characters that we've, you know, started, you know, we've we followed in season one. Yeah. And I mean, I'm sure, of course, we're going to get back to them, but uh, it is just kind of strange to go from them to these, uh, you know, every all these other characters. And, you know, you kind of get confused on who the main character is supposed to be at some point. You're like, you know, OK, are we going to go back to Yuji or are we going to like, I guess we're focusing on this character now. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then, of course, there's also Yuta, who's, of course, the main character of uh, Jujutsu Kaisen yeah, from Zero. Zero. And I mean, he, like, uh, he he didn't make any appearances in season one. He just he was only mentioned by, uh, by his by his former uh, classmates uh, in the film. I was like Ma- Maki and and the others. Um, yeah. They they kind of uh, you know make passing references of him. We like we barely see like you know images of him uh, here and there. But um, of course, not until like uh, his actual full introductory appearance in in Zero. So. Um, Hopefully we'll get to see more of him. Um, possibly by the Shinjutsu. Uh, Shinjutsu. 
Shibuya. Sh- Shibuya arc, yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, so uh, de- definitely looking forward to that. Hopefully, if if he in- inevit- inevitably does make an appearance later, because uh, I think we did yeah. get a hints of him uh, during the the early trailers for season two. Yeah, um, but yeah, I don't have too much else to say about this episode. Um, I, li- I did also like the new op- new opening and the new ending theme. Uh, mm-hmm. We actually have Tatsuya Katani doing the opening, who of course did the opening for Bleach. Now I guess he moved on to doing Jujutsu Kaisen. Yeah, I, I, def- I definitely enjoyed it as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, I guess we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Um, well, over the I think you said it was going to be five episodes for uh, for this. And that's what they were saying is that this is going to be five episodes, and then the uh, Shibuya incident is going to be eighteen episodes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, uh, ho- hopefully, you know, like it, this, you know, this new arc will end. Uh, eventually deliver and hopefully we'll get to see what what's happening with our uh original cast members uh like hopefully once a, a new story arc starts yeah yeah guys so that all being said until next time we will see you all later <laughs>